Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stay so with me. Shalawama. And we're looking at a question from Enduring to the End. Okay. Matter of fact, you want to go ahead and read the question? Sure. It says, Coach, first of all, thanks for all the lessons you put out. I am reading in the Third Testament. Could you explain? It seems as if it teaches one God. Page 133, chapter 19. I had to go over to your copy of the Third Testament because it wasn't matching up to my page 133. It's actually on page 190 in the PDF. But either case, it's talking about this chapter here, chapter 19, which is called the Divine Trinity. Right. Mm hmm. So before we get into those verses, we'll go down through and we'll look at what the Third Testament says about the Trinity or the one God or the three gods or whatever it says in there. But before we get into what the scripture says, what do you know about this Trinity? Well, I was always taught in the church that um, there were actually three, three and I'm going to say persons, just to make um, us have a better understanding. Um, and those were God, whom we call the Father, um, the Messiah, and then there was the Holy Spirit. And we were taught that they were three and that each had a different job, the Father being the most important. Um, Jesus being the second and then the Holy Spirit being last. Also, we were taught that they came, you know, in three different eras. The Father being the first, Jesus being the second, the third, Holy Spirit being the era that we live in now. As well as that we were taught that the Father was gone, no longer active. The Messiah was dead, and we have the Holy Spirit down here with us now. So I was definitely brought up to believe that there were three different people, three different persons, three different entities. As if the three could somehow disagree with one another. I mean, if you have three different people, three different beings, you can have one doing one thing and another doing another. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that could be the case with the so-called three persons right. where one could have one interest and another could have a completely different interest. Right. The father was the head of, you know, the Messiah and who, you know, who knows where the Holy Spirit came from, but it was there as well. And you say you were taught this in the church? Yeah. This is what we were um, taught to believe. Well, I guess that's the reason why there's so much debate on the subject. Um, many people will argue on both sides, I guess, because it's something that's being taught in the in the church. However, it seems as though the scripture could have conflicts with that, like where the Messiah said that he was one, him and the father was one. But let's look at the third testament of the Bible, because this is kind of new. And I believe it's going to shed a lot of light on the truth and whether there are three up there or whether the three are one. Okay. All right. So we're looking here in chapter 19. This starts section five, which is forms of divine revelations and the word of God. But we're down here in chapter 19, the divine trinity, looking at this compilation or this section which is called the unity of God with Christ and the Holy Spirit if you would go ahead and read verse 1 okay the light of my word will unite all men during this third era my truth will enlighten every mind thus eliminating differences in creeds and worship and this is important to note about this third testament of the Bible like the last few classes that we've done is bringing a lot of clarity to some of the mistruths, or, well, a lot of the mistruths that we've had in the past. Enlightening us. Yeah, it's, it's like our father went in recognizing everything that we struggled with in the First Testament, which we call the Old Testament, and the New Testament, which is would be the Second Testament. Those things that were 
left ambiguous or left confusing. Mm -hmm. It seems as though he has addressed all of them here in the third testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like you said, enlightening us. Well, this is the promise of the third testament of the Bible where he promises to bring spirit and truth. But if you would, go ahead and read verse 2. Today, while many love me in Jehovah and disregard Christ, others love me in Christ, ignoring Jehovah. While some recognize my existence as the Holy Spirit, others debate and divide themselves because of my trinity. So you have this division amongst the believers Mm -hmm. because some believe that he's different. Now, I've heard this debate many times. But the one thing that jumps out to me, what this verse seems to be hinting on, is how there are some who claim to love Jehovah or Jehovah or Yahuwah, Yahuwah, which we learned about in the Old Testament. I mean, there's there's people who only read the Old Testament and refuse to read the New Testament of the Bible at all. Mm -hmm. They don't even believe in it. Mm -hmm. Some would say that the Jewish community falls under this group that, you know, they only believe in the Torah or the Old Testament Mm -hmm. and they don't read or teach or really care to understand anything from the New Testament. Mm -hmm. While there's others who believe only in the New Testament. That would be the today's believers, today's Christians. Yeah. A lot of Christians will fall under that group where they don't believe anything from the Old Testament is pertinent to these times. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's a bunch of, you know, fun facts and good stories back in there, but none of it is relatable to our day. Right. So you have those two different groups, but now we have this new group that's coming along. I haven't really met any of these people yet, but I'm sure they exist. Those that only believe in the third Testament of the Bible and reject the old Testament and the new Testament. Those that only believe that these things are spiritual, only believe spiritual. Don't, but they, they would also believe that none of the laws apply to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way the people who only regard the new Testament They believe that the laws have been done away with. Mm -hmm. But then I guess they would also have to reject the whole love aspect of it that we learned in the second era. Mm. But either case is creating these debates and creating these divisions because it's not really clear, I believe. Right. But a lot of that will be made clear in this video. So let's go on to verse three. Now, then I ask this humanity and those who guide it spiritually. Why do you drift away from one another when everyone recognizes the true God? If you love me in Jehovah, you are within the truth. If you love me through Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. If you love me as the Holy Spirit, you approach the light. Now, notice here how he says, love me. Mm -hmm. All three times, he says, if you love me as Yahuwah, you love him as the truth. Pointing to the same um, person. Right. That when the Christ, he said, was the way, the truth, and the life. And then he says, the Holy Spirit, you approach the light. Right. But he's speaking to those, he says, that guide humanity spiritually. So he's talking about the spiritual teachers out there or the religious leaders of today. Mm -hmm. Why are they creating these divisions when we recognize that there is only one God? Right. All right, so let's go on to verse four. You have only one God, only one Father. There are not three divine persons who exist in God, but only one divine Spirit who has manifested himself in three different phases to mankind. And mankind, in its smallness, while penetrating the profound, believed to have seen three persons when only one Spirit exists. So he's saying that there are not three different persons here Mm -hmm. he's saying that it's only one only one god exists Mm -hmm. but herein lies the problem is that he manifested himself in three different phases okay so how does that go about well he came first in the days of moses where he was speaking to us from a mountaintop right we heard his voice sounding like trumpets Mm -hmm. blowing and you know, with a bunch of smoke and lightning and, you know, all kinds of terrifying events going on mm-hmm. um, as he gave us the covenant. Right. 
that was the first era. And then in the second era or the second time, we heard him through the voice of a man. Right. Where he was no longer on the mountain, but came down in the human form and talked to us face to face or talked to them who were able to be in his presence. He talked to them face to face as one would talk to a person. Mm -hmm. Well, they were actually talking to a person. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a dialogue. But then in this third era, he's coming in spirit. Right. Where he's actually being heard from inside of our conscious. So mm -hmm. he's speaking to us from within. So that we recognize as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But they came down in three different phases. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what's causing some of the confusion is that he didn't present himself all at one time as these three different individuals. Right. Mm -hmm. We had to get them piece by piece by piece. And so now there may be some who recognize it as three different gods altogether or three different persons. Right. I heard someone or maybe I read somewhere where it referred to the Trinity as one book with different pages. And I thought that that was a great way of looking at it. Yeah, we didn't get all of it at one time. You know, that's a brilliant plan because, you know, we had to grow mm -hmm. spiritually. So he couldn't really give us all of the information at one time. Evolve. Yeah, we had to evolve. Um, and part of our spiritual growth is that now here in this late in the game, are we just now becoming familiar with the Holy Spirit? Whereas before we've recognized him as the YHWH or Yahuwah, and we recognized him in the flesh when he came as the word made flesh. Right. But let's finish up this verse. Okay. Therefore, when you hear the name of Yehovah, think of God as father and as judge. When you think of Christ, see in him God as the master, as love. And when you try to comprehend where the Holy Spirit originates, Know that it is none other than God manifesting his infinite wisdom to those most advanced disciples. So he is the same, mm -hmm. just in three different forms. Right. The same being coming in three different ways. So it's not three persons at all. It's only one person. Sort of like a, um, a Eddie Murphy movie. Where, where he's, he's playing still, different yeah, roles. Playing different roles. Mm-hmm. But it is still the same person. Right. And the reason why Eddie would be playing those different roles is because we need to understand the different parts that he's playing. Mm -hmm. You know, one would be an old lady and the other one is the young child and then the mm -hmm. other one is the middle aged man. Those are three different important roles in the movie. And if you eliminate any one of those roles from the movie, the movie won't make sense. Right. Well, that's the same case now where if we take away the Holy Spirit then none of the rest of it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Why do we have a law if it's not to bring us to where we can actually hear the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Why would we have the word if it wasn't to teach us how to live with the Holy Spirit? Yeah. You know, we need all three, but we recognize them as three different characteristics of the same being. Right. Well, you know, it's so amazing how the father... Uh, set it up like that, where first he gave us the instructions mm -hmm. and then he gave us the love. And now he's coming to us with the wisdom, the light and the knowledge. And you really can't have the wisdom or the love before you have the instructions. Mm -hmm. So those three um, forms that he came in were at the right time. And they were, I guess, strategically placed so that everything would fall in order. Right, right. Like mm -hmm. you said earlier, so we can evolve properly. Mm -hmm. We had to have these three different stages. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to verse five. If I have found humanity of ancient times spiritually evolved like the present one, I would have manifested myself before it as the father, as the master and as the Holy Spirit. Then men would have not seen three gods when only one exists. However, they were not capable of interpreting my lessons. Thus, they would have confused themselves and taken another path 
and kept on creating accessible and insignificant gods according to their imaginations. So we wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we had to get it in three different stages. Mm -hmm. And if we had enough, what did it say there? We would have confused ourselves, mm -hmm. taken a completely different path. And would have kept creating other gods. Right. We probably would have made figures out of the Messiah and mm -hmm. out of the Holy Spirit and just kept making God after God mm -hmm. as we tried to illustrate what we were experiencing. Right. But with him coming first as the law or as the covenant, there was really nothing for us to draw a picture of there. Mm -hmm. We had the scripture and that was it. Unlike the second era when he came as a man, surely we painted pictures of him then. Right. Um, I mean, we didn't get a legitimate picture of him because mm -hmm. it was against the law to make an image of any human, much less our father. So they waited until Constantine's time and even after that to, you know, paint a picture of the guy we see on the wall. We know that ain't, you know, accurate at all. But that's what we would have done. Right. If he hadn't have done it this way, we would have humanity would have now been worshiping the dove or whatever they use to recognize the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But notice there how he says, if we had have been evolved, if we had have been who we are now, evolved to where we are now, then he could have presented himself right. altogether. Mm -hmm. But I guess the problem was, is that we were so far behind right that's why we needed the law in the first place because mm -hmm. humanity had deteriorated to the point where we were acting like animals mm -hmm. you know and so we had to be taught how to even live as humans right you know what to eat what not to eat yeah. um not to be you know knocking our wives in the head like cavemen and all of that kind of stuff we were doing before we got the law yeah, it wouldn't have made it made any sense or our forefathers would have been confused if you would have tried to present some, them something spiritually back yeah, then. Yeah, absolutely. They would have been confused. Could you imagine how many different gods they would have came up with mm -hmm. if they were thinking spiritually? I mean, look at all the ones they came up with just thinking materialistically. Well, you know, we're at this time are being presented things spiritually and look how confused we are. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely something that we're having to learn. Right. But praise our Father in heaven, we have the third testament of the Bible that's teaching us. Just mm -hmm. like we had to be taught the law and just like we had to be taught love, now we have the third testament that is teaching us this light or teaching us how to be these spiritual minded people. Right. And praise the Father for the third testament of the Bible. But. Let's go on to verse six. When men understand and accept this truth, they will regret having Leo rejecting one another because an error which could have been avoided with a little love. Yeah. So, you know, like we said, there are people who are fighting. There are people arguing. People who only believe in the Torah or the Old Testament are fighting against people who believe and teach the New Testament mm -hmm. and vice versa. People right. who believe in the New Testament are at war with people who teach the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And that be the case with the Third Testament as well. All because they're recognizing him as three different gods. Right. I mean, there there are people who claim that there is a God of the Old Testament who was vengeful and violent and murderous and, you know, all of these horrible things. They portray him as being the God of the Old Testament, saying that he is going away and we have a new God of the New Testament. Right. Well, that couldn't be further from that. It is the same person, mm -hmm. you know. And then with that, a lot of the confusion comes with the word Lord and Elohim and yeah. how it's used interchangeably. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why you need a concordance. So you can actually look at the words that are being used, you know. And when you read in the scripture where it talks about how he's going to bring a particular punishment what you'll find out is that it's not our father right. that's doing this but it's actually the elohim mm -hmm. these other entities that is actually bringing this pain he's actually bringing love and, right. and light and understanding but there are entities 
that seem to be quite violent. Some of these angels, you know, are out for war. Mm -hmm. But the problem doesn't identify them all the time. It just gives them the name Lord. Yeah, I would say that probably the majority of the time the word Lord was used. It's not talking about our father. Right. It's talking about, like you said, other Elohim angels. I was uh, sort of amazed to find out that. And it was very confusing for me when it was talk about what well, the Lord said this and my Lord said to, you know, He's and I'm like, OK, well, the. Is the father talking or somebody else talking? Yeah. So, yeah, that does bring on a lot of confusion. And so we have to pull out the concordance mm -hmm. and look to see who is this talking about mm -hmm. so that we don't get confused thinking that there is a God of the Old Testament and mm -hmm. a different God of the New Testament. Right. You know, it's only one. And we're proving that here in the scripture. So let's look at the next verse. If Christ is love, do you believe that he would be independent of Jehovah if I am love? Yeah. So we learn in, even in the New Testament that God is love. Mm -hmm. And then we find that Christ taught love. So how would we recognize him as a different being? Mm -hmm. They are the same. But we do have to recognize that Christ was also human. Right. And that also adds to the confusion mm -hmm. because he was just as human as we are. I mean, if you poked him, blood was going to come out. Right. You know, he had a heartbeat and blood pressure and, you know, all kinds of other things. Emotions. Emotions mm -hmm. and everything just as a human does. He was fully human, but at the same time, he was fully God. Right. And so that brings a lot of confusion, too, when, you know, he's praying and you're like, well, who is he praying to? Well, that's the human side that's praying. Mm -hmm. But if you don't recognize that recognize that he was fully human then it gets confusing because you know people say well he he didn't claim to be god mm -hmm. well he did when it was necessary for him to do so but a lot of times and most of the time he walking around as a human portrayed himself as a human yeah and, at the end, and you know we have to think a lot of times that when the messiah did a lot of this stuff he did it for others to see, mm -hmm. for their edification, uh, not for his own. Yeah, for and for an example of how we would live, mm -hmm. because him back then he had our father dwelling in his tabernacle. Mm -hmm. uh, that human part had our creator tabernacling inside of him. Right. Well, that is the same with us today. Mm -hmm. You know, we are fully human, but as we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we actually have our Father who is dwelling within our conscience. And just like the Messiah, we can hear him speak from there. Mm -hmm. We even gain power by his presence. Mm -hmm. But let's go on to verse eight. If the Holy Spirit is wisdom, do you believe that spirit to be independent of Christ when I am wisdom? Do you believe that the word and the Holy Spirit are different from one another? And we learn that the Holy Spirit is wisdom back there in Proverbs and how wisdom was in existence from the beginning. Well, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit was in existence from the beginning as well. Mm -hmm. So how could we believe that they are separate? Right. Our father is wisdom and he is love. He is the same entity. Yeah, that makes me think about when um, the father came to um, Solomon and, you know, by way of a dream, asked him, you know, what would he like? And he said, you know, that he would um, like wisdom. This was just the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the Holy Spirit, like you said, was there from the beginning and just showing up um, throughout Scripture it just Holy Spirit just didn't show up in the book, book of Acts. It's mm -hmm. always been there, just like um, the father, son has always been there as well. Yeah, we just had to learn how to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about the law. That's what the law, the instructions do for us is it teaches us how to be clean enough in order to have wisdom as our companion. Mm -hmm. Wisdom or the Holy Spirit doesn't want to be near or around an unclean vessel. And so we needed the law in order to teach us how to be clean enough to have the Holy Spirit the same way with love. I mean, the Holy Spirit is not going to dwell around a stingy person or mm -hmm. a person that doesn't have love for their brother. Could you imagine if she would? 
if she would dwell with somebody who was stingy and selfish and and arrogant and you know all of these other traits that our messiah denounced mm -hmm. people would be taking advantage of it we would be in spiritual warfare where they would actually be bringing fire down to harm one another yeah you know that's good what you was just saying about how the holy spirit was always there we just had to evolve so that the holy spirit could be a part like you said Holy Spirit is not going to dwell with an unclean vessel. That is the reason that we had to have the law. Mm -hmm. That is the reason that we had to have love. Then Holy Spirit, you know, manifested herself fully on the scene now because the law has, you know, is being carried out because the love has been carried out. Now it's sort of like you would say her time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for the new believer as well. The person who off the street now, you know how they make those little videos where they go up to the person and they say, well, you know, if you can quote a Bible verse, I'll give you $50 right. and the person can't come up with any. Well, the same way with them, if they want to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, all they have to do is first embrace the law mm -hmm. and then embrace love and charity. And then read the teachings of the Third Testament, get, embrace the teachings of the Third Testament, and they too will have the Holy Spirit to dwell with them, right. the spirit of Elijah. Right. But we cover that in another video. So let's go on to verse 9. It suffices to know something about the word which the Messiah taught to mankind in order for you to understand that only one God existed and will be only one forever. That is why I said through him, he who knows the Son knows the Father, for he is in me and I in him. Then, announcing in another time he would return among men, he not only said, I will return, but he also promised to send the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Consolation, the Spirit of Truth. And like you said, this being the teachings of our Messiah mm -hmm. that we have to come and understand. Him saying, if you know the Father... You know me. Sort of like I would say, if you know Coach in the Fight, you know my husband. Mm, yeah. They're the same. They just go by different titles. Is that sort of like no, what you're saying? And have different functions. Have different, ex exactly. But yeah. however they are, they're same. Mm -hmm. Same person. Right. So here in verse 9, it's talking about the three different manifestations mm -hmm. of the one creator, our one father. I think another word, you know, that might be a hang up and bring some kind of confusion also is like when it says he also promised to send the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That makes you think that he is sending another person out. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think it just has something to do with the word wording, because if you have Holy Spirit, you do have Messiah. Mm -hmm. You do have the most high. Mm -hmm. So it's one. He's not sending another person why he's going to stay at this place right here. It's him his, himself just showing up in a different form. And I think also what he was trying to say is not everybody is going to receive this Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Like it said out there in a, a previous verse, back out there at the end of verse four, where it says most advanced disciples. Right. So it's an if statement. It's saying that if you do this and if you do that, then you will receive this Holy Spirit. That's why he was saying that he was sending them out to those that are the most advanced. But let's go on to verse 10. Why should Christ come separately from the Holy Spirit? By chance, would he not have within his spirit the truth, the light, and consolation? Because you have to remember these three different phases and when they started. The first phase would have started back there with Moses. But we recognize Moses' time opening with the fourth seal. The fourth seal opened there in Moses' time, which brought us the first era that's talked about here. I know that's a little bit confusing when you understand that the second era was opened with the fifth seal, with the Messiah. That was He was the fifth seal being opened, and that's when we got the love. But my point is, is that the sixth seal, which is Elijah, which is the seal where we received the Holy Spirit, didn't open until 1866. So that's when the whole world 
had the indwelling. That's when the Holy Spirit came down. Some call it the Shekinah glory came down for the whole world would have been in 1866. Right. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. That would have been the sixth seal. But wait, go all the way back to the Messiah's time in the book of Acts, how they had the indwelling of the Holy Spirit way back then. That was well before the sixth seal had opened. Mm -hmm. So that, I believe, is the point that's being made here is that the Messiah made this available even then. The Holy Spirit was available even then. It's just that we had to gain all of the knowledge that the disciples and the apostles gained. We have to learn that and understand and live by that. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's just taken us, you know, 1800 years to do so. But now we have the scripture. We can read the scripture and we can learn what they learned from him. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we are still the same source. He was the word made flesh and we're reading this out of the word. So it's the same source. But we are getting it now. And as we embrace this word and its instruction, then we're able to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So what you're saying is that when the Holy Spirit came down in the book of Acts, this wasn't a universal thing. This was just sort of like, um, uh, I don't know what the word you would use, but it wasn't localized. For, yeah, localized. It wasn't for everybody. Well, it was for everybody. You know, like I said, it's a little bit confusing. It was for everybody. But the thing is, not everybody had the teachings. Not everybody had the lessons. Not everybody got to sit at the Messiah's feet right. and hear the word of God the way we're doing now. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, we're doing it through the scripture now. And anybody can go and buy a Bible and, or, you know, download it or read an audio anytime they want to now. But back then, there was only a few only mm -hmm. 11 or 12 or 13 of them that actually got to hear his words every day and live up to what is required to have the Holy Spirit. So my point is, is that it was available to everybody, but that everybody would have had to come and sit at the feet of the Messiah, which they did not do. Right. They really couldn't do that part. Right. Where now we Everybody can pick up the Bible and start to read it. So now is why we're seeing this Holy Spirit spread throughout the world. Right. All right. Let's go on to the next verse. Number 11 says, I am your master, but do not see me as separate from the father, for I am the father. And by master is talking about our Messiah. Right. And repeating exactly what we heard in the New Testament, where he said that he and the father are one. You and know. That is one of the reasons that he was um, put on the cross is because they say, they said that he was being blasphemous yeah. when he said that I am the father or one. But as always, he was only speaking the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking mm -hmm. the truth. All right. Let's go on to verse, 11, verse 12. There is no difference between the son and the Holy Spirit for Holy Spirit and the son are one single spirit. And I am that spirit. So all three are one. Right. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are the same. Right. There are no three different persons. Seeing my manifestations throughout time, one single God, which is he who has instructed you through many different lessons, like a single book with many pages. And you was referring to this right. verse earlier mm -hmm. where it's one book. You know, this third testament is just the third part of the Bible. You know, just like when we go to the Bible store, we don't ask for an Old Testament or a New Testament. Mm -hmm. Well, we pray that one day we'll be able to go and say, give me a Bible that will include all three testaments. And by then we will recognize our father as these three different manifestations right. and recognize them just like we'll recognize that book as just one Bible. We will recognize our father as one God. So I hope this clears it up. I hope this clarified your understanding of the Trinity and what the Trinity actually is. But if you have any more questions or anything, please put them in the comment section and we'll be glad to go over them. We thank our commenter for this question. Mm -hmm. I think we all get educated by these Bible studies. So we're appreciated. And if you guys have any questions or anything, please put them below and we'll see you down there. Shalom.